Um, right. Last season, probably through necessity, there were lots of players that played virtually every game, and I think it's seven or eight players played almost every Premier League game last season. Do you envisage that no longer being an issue for you because, because you have so many options? Well, we would like to use the squad um, in a different way this season, and, and especially with Champions League, that's going to be a, a very different need. Uh, we made a decision to treat the Europa League in, in a different way that we're going to do certainly this season with the, with the Champions League. So I think you will see a, a shift there. So presumably it'd be slightly less predictable. I mean, not predictable, but I mean, that season everyone pretty much knew what your starting lineup. Was roughly going to be. Yeah, his advantage as well, the chemistry and the understanding of, of that group was excellent. And sometimes even if the opponent knows what you're going to do, if you do it at the top level, it's not easy still to to, to go against it. But do you think now, because you have these, obviously the three big signings are all going to give you lots of options now? For sure. And, and play different formations and, and shift and, and, and move structures in different ways that in the past we haven't been able to do. Yeah. Can I find out you, Matt Turner? Probably up against him tomorrow. Not worried that he's going to have like a world world class day. <laughs> We see him all the best, you know, he's a fantastic person, I think he's been really helpful, I think he's adored and loved by everybody here. Um, obviously he's been given the opportunity to play more games um, and uh, at the end all of us made the decision that that was the right move for, for everybody and from here we wish him all the best because he fully deserves that. Hi Miguel, uh, I don't know if you saw Peter Schmeichel said this week that um, this bringing in another goalkeeper with Aaron might possibly destabilise the situation. Are you surprised with that possibility? Is that a concern for you, perhaps, in Granfield? So good luck to you. I have to try to have the, the best possible squad and the best possible balance, but I think it's nothing that you can isolate just with the goalkeepers. Because if I talk to you about what the fullbacks feel with each other, or the centre backs, or the attacking midfielders, I'm telling you, it's no difference at all. I think it's different for a goalkeeper though, because he was kind of saying that for a keeper you need that sense of security and continuity. Or it depends, but last year we said that how many players, seven or eight, played all the Premier League. So how is the other ones feeling? Okay, Isan from the Daily Mail. What have you made McCall the transfer craziness, uh, for example, Chelsea, Tottenham and Liverpool in the last couple of days? And in a way, does that kind of make you feel grateful to have got your business out of the way earlier, earlier in the window? Listen, everybody's trying their best to, to get the best possible squad and the best possible business done as early as possible, I can imagine. And, and we try to do that in, in the best way and um, we cannot control what the rest of And with the crazy fees, for example, some of the numbers that have been banded around in recent days with in excess of £100 million, pounds, how difficult is it in the modern day to find players that actually want to play for your club rather than going to the club that's going to spend or pay them the most uh, money? I think so far I can take the up to today that the players that we have tried to sign and, and we have had discussions with, they were so keen and um, and so willing to come to our club. OK, last couple. Paul from Rich. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Um, bearing in mind some of the fees being paid for players currently, do you actually think you've got a few bargains in the market, possibly even including <laughs> that can rise? <laughs> well, I talk about bargains with the, the amounts of money that we are moving nowadays. I don't think it's probably right uh, to use that. Uh, it's at the end is you have to do what you can afford, what is sustainable for the club as well, and and what, in our opinion or, or the club's opinion, makes sense. You know, and uh, and from there, then there will be for sure different opinions. What makes sense for one or for another person. And what have you seen from Kai Havertz so far in terms of where do you think he he would play if you this evening? Are you content to be moving him around in yes. different roles? Yeah. That's his yeah, I don't want to stick into one position. I prefer to do that with, with other players as well because then you are more unpredictable. You open their options, you open their minds to other things. And, and when you explore that, uh, and we have many examples of that in the squad, you get very, very good surprises. You need to understand when to do it and whether they're capable, the, the player is capable of doing it in that moment. And I think it's a good option to have. I finally we to late. Hi. As you look forward to tomorrow and the Premier League season, you reflect on your last three and a half years here. Has management come easier, harder? Are you still enjoying it? I love it. Easier, I wouldn't say it's easier, uh, especially because the demands that, that, that we put to ourselves and the demands that we have internally and externally always. But um, 
I love my job. I love what I do. I feel so grateful, and uh, and I want to keep doing it. That's for sure. Okay, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you. See you soon, sir.